We're talking about campus engagement in a college setting. Many students already have a service mentality, but faculty and staff can assist them in their civic development. It's Campus to Community. It's Campus to Community. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Hannah Baggett Anderson, lecturer of English and your new faculty fellow at the Literacy Commons here at UNCP. With me today to talk about service learning and the Literacy Commons is Mr. Sandy Jacobs, who is the Associate Director for Service Learning in the Department of Civic and Community Engagement. Thanks for joining me today, Sandy. Thank you for having me. Cool. So let's uh, start off to talk about uh, the Department of Civic and Community Engagement in general. What's your mission? Uh, so our job is to make sure that we create meaningful uh, service opportunities for our students and also impact the community in a meaningful way. Uh, so we prepare our students to go out and to, to help their future careers and also make an impact in the community. Excellent. Now, you are the Director of Service Learning, correct? Yes, ma'am. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that looks like on campus? So my job is to connect faculty and different courses with community partners. Uh, right now we have about 150 community partners in um, Robinson County and the local counties as well. And we have about uh, 40 faculty that are engaged in service learning opportunities. Um, so last year we had 139 courses that were designated as service learning. That's awesome. And what great growth. I know it's grown a lot. Um, <laughs> Moving forward now, I would personally love to talk about the Literacy Commons. Mm -hmm. um, that's now officially a part of CCE, right? Yes, it is. Uh, we received that back uh, last, last year in December, uh, so we had to move pretty quickly on a grant that was uh, associated with the Literacy Commons as well. Uh, we did a good job of connecting with students uh, to reach out with a specific program that we have right now through the Literacy Commons. Excellent. What should our community know and learn about the Literacy Commons? So the Literacy Commons is a space for community as well. Uh, right now we have an adult literacy class um, that community partners are welcome to, to come in and to learn about uh, finances, budgeting, uh, saving, uh, also you know, helping those that may not have their GED accomplish that as well. So it's a space for community to be involved on campus as well. Excellent. Talk to us about the space. I know there are several different rooms. Um, <laughs> what does that space look like in the Literacy Commons? Well, that space looks great. Uh -huh. And I got to give uh, kudos to you uh, for making that space look uh, alive and well. Uh, but yeah, there's about four rooms. Uh, there's a room that's specifically for workshops. There is a, what I would say is a social room where students and faculty can come together and bring their thoughts together and, and just think of great ideas for the Literacy Commons. And then there's space for, uh, for you uh, to mm -hmm. do your work as well and then also space for our students that volunteer and those that work specifically for us to uh, you know have the resources they need to, to get the job done mm -hmm. uh, so some computers and things of that nature great I love that um, in terms of the programs that operate under the Literacy Commons. I know our main one right now are tutors. Mm -hmm. Could you talk to us a little bit about that program? So um, with taking the Literacy Commons, there was a grant that was associated with that, and that grant was to reach out to third grade students in uh, reading literacy. Uh, so right now, uh, or let me back up, to, uh, last year, we had two schools that partnered with us where we sent two tutors to each school and they spent about four to five hours each week in there just assisting the third grade students in the way the teachers felt that the need was was there for them so uh, basically our job is to go into a school and to say what is your need to listen to them and then see if we can meet the need uh, this year we will have three schools uh, one being Prospect Elementary, the other being Union Elementary. This year we're taking on Peterson Elementary as well. Uh, so we'll have six tutors in those schools working anywhere to four to five hours a week as well. Uh, moving from that, uh, this semester they will move into a role of a volunteer coordinator where they will to go out to campus and to recruit volunteers and uh, bring tutors in at a, at a different level. So. That's really exciting. We're excited, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so great. I think now we can take a look at some photos, uh, perhaps, of the Literacy Commons space. 
Um, we have recently held a social uh, for our Literacy Commons tutors where they created different canvas paintings, mm -hmm. correct, mm -hmm. of um, things that inspire them. We also got taught, who is the, what's the name of the teacher that came in and uh, instructed? Katera Oxendine was, uh, is the third grade league teacher at Union Elementary, and she spent some time just training our students. Great. And I sat on, in on that. I know there, there were a couple of interesting things that they teach at the third grade level mm -hmm. that would be helpful even to our college students uh, in terms of definitely, reading. Definitely. Yeah. Um, and we see we are quite inspired by <laughs> Drake uh, on our Literacy Commons yeah. board there. We're always looking for some new ideas. Mm -hmm. And those are those exciting um, canvases that we've created in Literacy Commons. Yep. So we, a space looks great. It's alive and well. <laughs> yes. Thank you for sharing that with us. Um, why do you think, though, Sandy, kind of going out to a wider concept of literacy, why do you think that's important to focus on in this community in Robeson County? So uh, if, if you know uh, just the numbers in Robeson County when it, it comes to uh, the education um, in, in our public schools, is it's... Um, to be frank, it, it's, it's not great. Uh, and that's not saying that we're um, teachers and administrators are no, not doing the job that they need. It's just they may need some assistance, specifically in Robinson County. Uh, so I think it's important that uh, a resource such as the university go out and help the community uh, whenever there's a need that is such uh, of great magnitude with the education in Robinson County. Uh, but uh, just from the statistics that I saw last year, it seems that uh, the public schools are now moving up, um, you know, out of uh, that lower level into um, more of a mid-level of their, their rankings. And um, I, I can't say that it was because of UNCP, <laughs> but hopefully uh, that was a part of that. Yeah. That's so. great. I haven't heard those statistics, so that's super yeah, exciting. Yes. Uh, the really exciting. superintendent actually posted it a couple of days ago. That's so great. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need to put that up on the Literacy Commons board. Yeah, inspire someone. Yes. Um, what do you think your favorite part, I know it's hard to narrow down, but your favorite part for about working for the Department of Civic and Community Engagement or the Literacy Commons or service learning in general, what's your favorite part? Oh my. <laughs> so I, I would say that uh, every morning I, I wake up and I get to come to work and it's, it's not a job. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's, it's life. Mm -hmm. It's who I am. Uh, and what's really uh, unique is that service learning really saved me. Um, I was uh, not doing too well in college and I had an opportunity to take a service learning class and uh, right before dropping out, um, you know, service learning caught my mind and I said, you know, I love, I love working with youth, I love education, so I say service learning kept me in school. What's crazy and ironic is I'm actually doing the job that actually kept me in school. Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say that's, that's just reflecting on that is, is, is special because I know what it meant to me and now what it can help change in others' lives. So I'm excited about that every day. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Um, and you're teaching as well on top of um, your director job. Yes. What are you teaching this semester? Uh, so I have a freshman seminar cl class. Uh, I have a um, strategies for success class for students that are coming in that may have struggled with uh, the SAT or their GPA, uh, just teaching them, teaching them different methods just to be successful in academics and also socially, emotionally, whatever it may, may be. I use emotional intelligence in my class quite mm -hmm. a bit. Uh, and then I also have uh, what we call our Change Agent Academy, uh, UNV 2000, and basically it's a course that students have to actually apply for. There's an application process, so we want to pick the best of the best as those that have a service mindset, and then just think about student development theory and that how that helps them as students, leaders, and in their careers. Mm -hmm. uh, so just looking a little bit more deeper inside themselves of you know what makes you who you are, mm -hmm. and what can help you become a leader mm -hmm. in today's society. So. That's great. Are they going to be doing any kind of service this semester? Yeah, so there's quite a bit of um, uh, freedom that they have with that. Uh, they have their service learning experiences where they have 20 hours of um, service that they have to do with a specific community partner. And that's all bedded through me. Uh, we'll have a one-on-one -on -one and we'll talk about their goals. We'll also talk about their present or propose their community partner, the description of what they want to do and what they want to accomplish. 
so uh, they can do that through an alternative break program. They can do that through uh, tutoring at a school. Uh, they can do that through numerous of different opportunities we have on campus, such as Special Olympics, Sports Empowerment, VSA, those uh, things of that nature. But it's basically uh, 20 hours of service that is meaningful to them and the campus. That's great. Or the community. Mm -hmm. And how would they go about, I mean, this is not just for your change agents, but any students that's searching, uh, searching for community partners or ways to get involved in service, how would they go about finding those opportunities? So first of all, they could come by our office because we have an open door policy. Uh, you know, we like to meet students and just see who's interested. Uh, but we also have our, uh, our platform of UNCP Serve. So students have an opportunity to go in there and just to see the opportunities that will uh, allow them to volunteer. There are also different community partners they can see and do their own research about, you know, what does this community partner stand for? What are they trying to do? To see if it matches what they're interested in. So UNCP service is definitely something that can assist their students. They can track their hours, find volunteer opportunities, and at the end of the day, whenever they need that experience to show uh, to that future employer, uh, you know, here's a nice resume that's mm -hmm. printed out that's certified by the university. So, so great, and it's already done. It's already mm -hmm. done it's already for you. There. Perfect. Um, I want to kind of swing back around to our conversation about the Literacy Commons. Mm -hmm. I know we've jumped um, forward to service learning because Literacy Commons is connected so, mm -hmm. so well with that and is a part of the same department. Um, but I want to talk about some other programs that we have going on in, in LC, which we're nicknaming it or <laughs> trying to. Um, we have the tutors. That's our main our main kind of thing, or at mm -hmm. least where it started with the grant. Mm -hmm. What else is going on in LC? Uh, so we have uh, different initiatives that are just getting off the ground. Uh, we have our Science Buddies program, mm -hmm. uh, where we have a student who's going out to find volunteers to go to local schools, local after school programs, just to do experiments with students, just to get them excited about science. Uh, we have uh, an ESL program, uh, English as a Second Language, uh, that's going out to uh, the Red Springs area. Peterson, Red Springs Middle School, and Red Springs High School, just to assist um, you know, that population that may need some assistance there. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have different things that are on the horizon with our adult literacy program. Uh, we've had one workshop session um, about two weeks ago where we had 15 um, participants. There was 13 mm -hmm. community partners and three students, which was great. Uh, which means that space that we're <laughs> using may need to be another space just because it's so small, it was yeah. crowded. Um, we have one this Wednesday night, but because of Hurricane Florence, we won't be able to have that, so it's canceled. But mm -hmm. we have six other opportunities along the way, so that's basically what's going on in different uh, other initiatives that we're working on mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, always trying to grow right now, yeah, right? Yep. Oh, still feels so new. Uh, my question, again, too, that I think is an important one for our viewers is how students faculty and then even members of the community can get involved with um, stuff happening at Literacy Commons? Uh, so our students can definitely just, just come by, mm -hmm. uh, especially on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best time. Uh, they can come up my office as well. Uh, just to get them involved, uh, we're going to do um, outreach to the campus uh, by sending some of our students that work for us and volunteers just to get the word out about the Literacy Commons and how it can benefit our students. Uh, I would say to our faculty that uh, those that are interested in service opportunities, not necessarily just service learning, but hey, you may have a program that you want to incorporate some type of volunteer opportunities. Come by, mm -hmm. see us, how, see how we can collaborate. You may be already doing something that we can help with some resources. Uh, and then also to our community, just to, just to trust campus that we're here not to just to go in to get numbers and, and bring that back. We want to go out and stay there and keep the relationship and actually make impact in the community. So trust mm -hmm. us, come to campus. Uh, we're going out to the community as well. So um, yeah, just, just give us a chance to help. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Um, I'm just really excited. I'm overwhelmed mm -hmm. constantly thinking about Literacy Commons because even in the first couple of weeks of the semester, we've gotten to do so much. We're mm -hmm. establishing so much. Mm -hmm. Um, even your change agents are getting on board with, you know, being able to come even here on campus yeah. to community to talk about what they're doing. 
maybe stuff with the LC because yep. I've talked to a few of them. Yeah, and I, and I think that's uh, the reason why that's happening is because of the relationships uh, that we build with our students in the class. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you see uh, most of those change agent uh, students or students that have had relationships with you and trust you and know that you have the best interest in their mind, so that kind of funnels through different programs that we have. So just, uh, it's very important that um, faculty, staff, uh, and students just, just trust uh, each other and trust those that, are, that have the best interest in their mind. So um, yeah, you do a great job with your students. Thanks. So and do your you. service learning it's class. It's great, it's so <laughs> great. Um, with your change agent group too, this is your first year, mm -hmm. yes? Mm -hmm. uh, second, second, second year. Second, second year, year. good. Uh, do you plan on continuing to do it? Yes, we, we would love to, uh, to ultimate goal, uh, you know, I might be jumping the gun here, is to create a uh, civic, uh, community and civic engagement minor. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is our way to just evaluate is, you know, this course, is it actually hitting on what it needs to, to accomplish? Uh, there would be another course that would be a general course that's the foundation of that minor. And then along the way, students would need to complete several service learning courses that are offered, you know, like clockwork by different mm -hmm. faculty across campus uh, to, to hopefully create a minor. Mm -hmm. um, that's our ultimate goal. And I think there's value there mm -hmm. uh, just with the, our society in the sense of civic engagement and social justice. So mm -hmm. uh, you see, it's kind of a trend in higher ed right now, mm -hmm. and I think it's, it's a good one. Yeah. So. I'd agree with that, especially here at UNCP where we are so civically minded and we present that, I feel like, every day to our students, mm -hmm. whether it be through programming or emails or just seeing us around campus, mm -hmm. we're really focusing on that. So how cool it would be to integrate that directly into their education. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. There's so much going on, <laughs> you should get some uh, credit for it, right? Yeah, why so. not? I mean, if you can make it work for you. And that's how I feel about service learning too. I wish um, more faculty knew that it's not that difficult to integrate, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. How would they go about doing that? So uh, the process is, is we've simplified it. Um, so typically a faculty member reaches out to me and say, hey, can I know a little bit more about service learning? Or they come to a introduction presentation that I do at the beginning of the year. Uh, you know, I just give them, give them the grand scheme of what service learning looks like at UNCP. Uh, we don't want to take away the academic freedom, but mm -hmm. uh, there are requirements for service learning to be designated here. Mm -hmm. um, I give them that information. The online application is very simple. Uh, it basically asks them for their name, the course, and the description. They also can um, upload the syllabi on that uh, application as well. Once that's completed, uh, we have an advisory team that comes together and just goes through every service learning designation to see if it would meet the requirements. Mm -hmm. If they do, then they're presented to, the, uh, to our office and then we actually uh, sign it up uh, or put it on Brave Web mm -hmm. for the registrar to, to make sure students know that they're signing up for a service learning course. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it sounds like a lot, but it's most of, most of the work is on me. So. Yeah, yeah, and thank you. Thanks for doing that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I know this is a little bit of a weird question, but do you ever get uh, students that don't realize that they're signing up for a service learning class? So yeah, um, on uh, Brave Web, when they're registering for classes, there's an essay uh -huh. that just shows service learning designation uh, and we've had some students in the past those that are I wouldn't say don't care about giving back but more of their own comfortable mm -hmm. in, in that situation to to be hesitant about that so that's happened not much mm -hmm. uh, but it has happened in the past it mm -hmm. has happened in the past and those that stayed in the course actually felt more connected to the the community and the class through that mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, if some students uh, are freaked out by the service learning, just give it a try. It actually may change your life. Yeah. So, Yeah, I agree. I'd say even in my experience teaching service learning courses, I'll have resistance. I will say especially from ath athletes that have some tight schedules. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as, as you're aware in someone that teaches service learning and organizes it all, we work with student schedules. Mm -hmm. uh, we have everything kind of calendared out if we can. Mm -hmm. Um, and even if you can't make the main kind of events that we're scheduling, we always have backup plans, yep. or at least try to, yep. right? Mm -hmm. So I always encourage our faculty to have some type of alternate uh, opportunity for the students, uh, just because of, uh, you know, 
uh, not all traditional students here at UNCP. Mm -hmm. uh, we're very unique, so we just need to keep that in mind for, for our entire student population. Yeah, absolutely. I'd say too, sometimes I even wonder if I were a potential community partner, if I was an organization in Robinson County mm -hmm. that could benefit from um, some student service mm -hmm. or at least would be willing to allow students um, to try and be helpful because mm -hmm. I know it's kind of hard to change up those um, organized plans that you mm -hmm. have. How would they reach out to say I would be willing or at least am in need in some way of help from the university? So it's um, typically we, we do a presentation at some setting at a, uh, a community partner workshop that we have and uh, the light comes on to a community partner, hey, that makes sense, mm -hmm. or just uh, word of mouth. Um, and also UNCP Serve has been very beneficial to us as well. Uh, the word has really grown in the past two to three years uh, mm -hmm. of UNCP Serve, and I think that's really uh, assisted in just our story matching with the community partner's need and mm -hmm. what we can bring to the table. So uh, I would say word of mouth is, is the biggest thing right now in the Robinson County area. And it's also making to the surrounding uh, communities as well, mm -hmm. or the counties. Uh, we have quite a few um, outreaches in Scotland and Hoke, mm -hmm. uh, and we have some things going on in Cumberland County as well. Mm -hmm. So the, the word's getting out, and regionally we want to make a difference as well, just not in Robinson County. Yeah, absolutely, and I like hearing that I know a lot of us, at least on the faculty side, do end up traveling, mm -hmm. which sometimes it's difficult to connect with the community when we don't live here. Mm -hmm. And I know we don't want to seem like outsiders completely, but a lot of us are. Mm -hmm. um, so it does take some time to form those relationships, which is why, personally, I, like, I try to focus on Robinson County and mm -hmm. my service learning, but there are opportunities I've seen on UNCP Serve in Cumberland, mm -hmm. which... Um, where a, m a majority of us en end up traveling mm -hmm. from, mm -hmm. not too far, but a lot, a lot of our students are from Fayetteville too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, a lot of community students from mm -hmm. that area. Yeah. Yep. So there's opportunities for them. Uh, we just want to be innovative uh, in our approach to give our students the best opportunity, uh, mm -hmm. just to, to simplify things for them as well. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Going back to the literacy commons, mm -hmm. which I always like to go back to, um, what what are you seeing or what are you hoping for as it develops in the upcoming years? Oh, so <laughs> we've had this conversation. Uh -huh. uh, I, I like to dream big. Uh -huh. uh, Christy Potit, who is our director, likes to dream big. Uh, she has a heart for community. I do as well, and also Dalton Hoffer. Uh, but we would eventually like to have a community center, mm -hmm. um, possibly off campus. So we can bring the community, students, faculty, and staff together. Uh, you know, our, our vision or our, our statement that Chancellor has set out is changing lives through education. Uh, and that's for our students, staff, faculty, and the community. Mm -hmm. uh, what better way to do that in a one-stop location? Uh, with our office, we're so spread out. Mm -hmm. We have our care resource center, which is away from us. Our emergency shelter that uh, we help manage that is away from us. Uh, but if we could bring all those together in the community, it would, it would make a, a big difference. So that's within the strategic plan yeah. for years to come, but we would love to have a, com a community center where all can come mm -hmm. together to learn. And that would be amazing mm -hmm. because I already feel like we're starting to outgrow mm -hmm. um, Wellens G, which mm -hmm. is where the Literacy Commons is, uh, especially for those um, community meetings mm -hmm. and um, learning opportunities. Like mm -hmm. you said, how many people showed up for that first adult training? Yes, there were, there were 15, uh, and basically that space is just uh, an old dorm, mm -hmm. uh, and then that's just a suite. So at 10, we're at capacity. So mm -hmm. uh, it's a good problem, it's an issue, uh, but it's something that we will overcome. We will just move to another location uh, and have plenty of space. Yeah. So it just shows the need of um, one-stop location. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it happens, uh, we're gonna keep pressing. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I will say though, in terms of our student tutors and other volunteers that might come by, it's the perfect small and intimate space for talking and learning mm -hmm. and presentations. For example, I thought um, our training for the literacy tutors went super well because mm -hmm. there are only six of us, six, six of them, mm -hmm. um, plus us in that space worked out. Felt mm -hmm. like we got a lot from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And we want to make sure that students know that that's uh, a safe space. Uh, mm -hmm. You come with your ideas, um, your beliefs, all different types of walks of life. 
uh, and you're going to be respected for that. Mm -hmm. And um, it's just a space for us to come together. Yeah. So. Absolutely, and not not even you don't even have to necessarily be involved directly in the volunteering just yet. Like mm -hmm. it is open, and as someone whose office is there, I say we're convenient because we're right behind Starbucks. Yep. Come on by. Right behind it. Yeah, <laughs> and Jacobs Hall is not far from it either. Yep. Um, is there anything else that we have not touched on yet that you think is important to share with our viewers today? Um, I would say that something that's on the horizon um, for the university as a whole through our office is just um, the literacy commons. We really want to take that to uh, the next step. Um, uh, thanks to, to, to Scott Hicks and David Marquard, who's no longer here, but Dr. Hicks is, uh, were the founding uh, fathers, I would say, mm -hmm. of the Literacy Commons. And their concentration was on reading, and rightfully so, because that's their concentration area here, or discipline at the university. But the Literacy Commons wants to be something that's very general. Uh, mm -hmm. Science, math, finances, whatever, whatever it may be. Uh, literacy can be very general, very broad. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, with that being said, we want to make sure that um, the university as a whole is moving forward and defining what outreach and what community and civic engagement looks for the university as a whole. And I think the Literacy Commons may be that driving factor for that. Mm -hmm. So, just, just look out in the future. I won't try to give too much information, but mm -hmm. <laughs> that may be uh, something that's on the horizon for the university. Yeah. That excites me. Um, yeah, even trying to define, I've gotten colleagues even in the English department who know literacy well or mm -hmm. know the concept of literacy well saying, what are the literacy comments? You know, I don't, I don't get it. Mm -hmm. um, is it just about reading? But redefining or understanding the term literacy mm -hmm. as something that touches all disciplines mm -hmm. is so important mm -hmm. because we can really touch anything in that, in that um, department or, you know, mini department, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that program and man it's exciting yep. particularly too with something like science buddies that mm -hmm. we're developing and you know I have a, a mentee that's going to be going into Magnolia soon mm -hmm. um, that's going to be combining literacy with science buddies and mm -hmm. being able to do that. And that's exciting because Magnolia uh, really hasn't had much outreach in mm -hmm. the past so that just shows that we're growing we're growing it's in Robinson County but it really hasn't had much outreach yeah. so it's and exciting. I, yeah and as a large county you know gotta mm -hmm. reach gotta reach on out. Mm -hmm. um, we're about out of time today Sandy okay. so thanks so much. Thank you for, for having talking me. It's with been us great. about service learning and CCE and literacy comments um, and thank you to our viewers for joining us here on Campus to Community. We'll continue to talk to service learning faculty and students this semester. I'm Hannah Baggett Anderson. See you next time.